views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow, everyone. Welcome to the show. It's so great to be connecting with all of you. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Welcome to Transformation Talk Radio and all of you out there. What an amazing show we have for you today. Are you ready for this, folks? The Science of Planetary Signatures in Medicine, Restoring the Cosmic Foundations of Healing with my very special guest, Uh, and author Jennifer Gale, who's joining me here today on the show. We've got three copies of this fabulous, fabulous book to give away. Now, you know, what is it about Jennifer, you know, that got her to the table to say, wait a minute, you know, I have a book that I am called to write about human health and cosmic science. Now, how do we know this? Well, I'll tell you what. What do you think folks did when they were looking to the stars thousands of years ago? You know, what were they tapping into? You know, what is it about ancient medicine that is still being practiced across different continents of the world that we are still not willing to look at, but Jennifer has brought to the table for us to talk about. Today, we get to look at this comprehensive exploration of celestial influences, but one thing in mind, health and healing. Jennifer, great to have you on the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Pat. It's a pleasure to be here. What has gotten you fired up about this topic? Because, you know, for folks that don't have the book in front of them, I will be able to give them this book. But I'm telling you, there are so many things in here that I can't wait to talk with you about. Everything from hexagons in outer space, (laughs) you know, to the serpentine spine. But how about you? What has gotten you fired up? Well, what originally got me fired up was music, followed by an avid interest and passion in astrology and understanding my own nature through the language of astrology. Um, And then later in my professional life, working at an acupuncture school, receiving acupuncture treatments as a perk of the job and becoming absolutely enthralled with the system of Chinese medicine. Through that connection, I then discovered the creators of Acutonics, Acu for acupuncture, tonics for the tones that are used on the body, on the acupuncture points and meridian system um, instead of needle insertion. And it brought it all together for me. It used music, my origin. It used astrology and the, the planetary tones and energies through the system or via within the context of the system of Chinese medicine. So it was really an answer to prayer for me. And um, I've just been developing it ever since. So with regard to the book, it was a gradual process of really feeling called. And and that happened um, when I went back to grad school to get my master's in health sciences, started doing a lot more writing, but it was also my spiritual journey. And as you said in your introduction, a real strong calling and compulsion to write this book. 
Yeah, you know, it's really difficult to explain to folks when we have that compulsion to do things. And what I mean by that, it, by a compulsion is, you know, I've had to explain myself to many, many people about why I show up every day and do what I do. You mm -hmm. know, what it was it about starting this independent positive talk network that seemed so counter to what somebody like me was supposed to do in life. But you've been called to explore this. And I want to ask you your thoughts on why. Why do you think the world, A, is ready to hear this now, and B, absolutely needs to hear this now? Yeah, I, I do <laughs> feel <laughs> that it was simultaneously those things happening. I mean, the compulsion within me. And then as I began to do the research and literally chapter by chapter feeling led by those, you know, what, who I call my celestial family or my, <laughs> my uh, celestial team and, you know, really being guided chapter by chapter, because the, the proposal and the outline that I originally started with naturally changed. It's like, um, you know, an architecture designs a blueprint for a house, but once they get in there and start doing the work, they may make some revisions. And, and you just have to stay open moment to moment. But getting back to, I, I, I just knew in that process that there was a very profound reason why this power greater than me and who I am and my little life here in little old mm -hmm. Holidaysburg, Pennsylvania, <laughs> really matters. And not just to me, but to all of us to really show the connection that we have between human beings and our environment whether it's planet Earth environment or the greater cosmos. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's what I love about this. I mean, many people would say, where do we even begin the conversation? I think that I want to start with you uh, in the section of the book where you started to write about the four building blocks of the cosmos. And the reason I, I kind of want to start there is because it will really point to everything that has come before, so to speak. But, you know, according to what you've written, there are four building blocks to the cosmos. And, it, and these are important for us to at least to begin to understand, aren't they? Absolutely. And yes, so the four building. You want to relax more, feel happier and be more confident. Do you want to have more success in your life? Dave Dodge has some easy, effective methods to help you release your anxiety, worry, fear, depression, and even physical pain. Tune in to Stress Buster Radio with Dave Dodge every second Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. For more information on how Dave can help you release your stress, visit StressBusterRadio.com. Skype and phone sessions are available. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world 
one listener at a time. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Yeah, that's what happens when you start to talk about the cosmos, right? You know, the four building blocks of the cosmos. Jennifer, thank you. Before we jump ahead, though, um, we're going to give away copies of the book, but I want to make sure that folks know how they can find out more about you. So please give out your website. Sure. My website is soundworksbygale.com found work, W-O-R-K-S, B-Y, and my last name is G-E-H-L dot com. Perfect. Okay. The four building blocks of the cosmos. Now, the reason I ask you this question, because I think they set the stage for Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of what we're going to talk about today, but also the many things you put in the book. Um, I'd love to hear you share uh, what they are. Sure. Okay. So, In the hermetic principle, Hermes, that is, as above, so below, these four building blocks of the cosmos are known as fire, solids, liquids, and gas. And in the body and in the astrology chart, it's known as fire, earth, air, and water. So the ancient physicians practiced what they called humoral medicine, H-U-M-O-R-A-L, standing and which, um, so these four building blocks, they called the four humors. And it was the combination of the hot, cold, moist, dry, and how they combine to create different phenomenon or phenomena in the body and affects us at the individual level, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. So just as we see, you know, universes upon universes being created, same thing, you know, our inner space reflects this same goings on. We may not feel it or, you know, be aware of it, but all of this morphing and changing is going on um, and reflecting what is happening in the greater cosmos. Wow. You know, let's look at this, though, in, in, a, in a perspective of our everyday lives. Clearly, we are here in the world, and we look up and we look to the stars, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we look at, uh, you know, various ways to tap into ancient wisdom. What would you say are, if you had to pick three of the most important things about these building blocks – What would you say they are? Because now we're living in a world where generally most people know some aspect of um, uh, uh, of Tarot. Other Mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. are are very tapped into, you know, the symbology of the sky and astrology. Um, But the way you're talking about them is very, very cool. But also it is really more eye opening, isn't it, for us to get a handle on? It was to me because there's, it's infinite and (laughs) there are infinite rabbit holes to go down as well. So really for listeners to understand 
what it is I'm getting at and what I think would help people the most as a starting point is just being able to recognize ourselves in these temperaments, these four temperaments. And I, you know, since astrology is my language, um, but by the way, these four elements are also used in tarot, you know, the cups, the um, spades, and help me out here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, but anyway, well, yeah, what we're thinking about is how we relate to things. You know, yeah. how do we relate to some of the signatures, some of the signs? Exactly. You know, how do we relate? Uh, I mean, you know, there are those of us that have a very keen sense when we take a look at astrology for ourselves. You know, we have some idea of what it means. And then all of a sudden you're living your life and things start to show up. You know, we're looking at, you know, the uh, tetrahedral and we're looking at what that means. And, you know, we have a client right now who is launching an entire platform based on sacred geometry and this geometry. Right. And people are like, why are you doing it? Well, there's no why. We're just being called now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It is it is a time when science and spirit are really conjoining and. People are under it's, it's the balance of the intellect and intuition. Mm-hmm. It, uh, but I, I want to get back to your original question and how we can recognize ourselves in these four elements because so often we want people to respond in the same way that we would. You know, we put that expectation on them, but they're not going to because we're all so very different and we each have our own unique signature based upon the configuration of these four elements. But to give an example, let's look at how fire operates in nature. Does it move slowly or quickly? Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it, moves, yeah. it moves quickly. It's very loud and boisterous. It consumes what's in its path, but it's got a lot of things going on at the same time. Contrast that with water which moves slowly, seeps down. Fire, again, is also upward rising. Smoke rises. Water seeps down into the depths of the earth. It, has, it needs a container, and it takes on the shape of its environment. Water drops are adhesive. You can't separate two drops once they've become joined. So <laughs> right. water signs are the empaths, and they require developing healthy boundaries so that they can discern what am I feeling and what is someone else or the whole room feeling. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, there, this is something that when we start to step out, we have a sense of it. But I think what you're saying is more than having a sense of how this works and determine who we are, you know, there are characteristics for us to become familiar with, maybe even understand at some level that open up the door for a new kind of healing, which Mm -hmm. is an ancient healing. And I think in the book, you talk about this um, in terms of, you know, the, the medicine connection, right? Yes. And, and talking about this. Um, but it's really an interesting dialogue to have when you're sitting across the table from someone and you ask them the chicken and the egg question, you know, <laughs> yeah. which came first, mm-hmm. medicine or healing, right? right. It's phenomenal. It's a great conversation to have, isn't it? Uh, what would you say? <laughs> well, that's, that's why in the introduction, I do. I love etymology. I love yeah. going back to the roots of words. And really, so many of the words that we associate with medicine go back to the roots of healing, meditation, going to that still point, understanding how nature works. And and so this is why I address, you know, medicine um, in the introduction of the book. And that kind of sets the foundation for why I want to discuss more of the healing components that are that do exist within the context of as above so below as within so without and i want to mention too just go back a little bit to your um mentioning sacred geometry earlier yeah one of the huge ahas i had while writing this book 
even though I had been, as an acutonics practitioner, I had been, you know, familiar with Pythagorean concepts, I still did not realize until I started writing this book that Pythagorean math, or let's say, um, okay, the concept itself includes number in and of itself, number in space, which is geometry, number in time, which is music, and number in space-time, which is astronomy. And that all involves the platonic solids, which is the basis of sacred geometry, how they all come together. And so if astronomy is the language of the cosmos, of the greater whole of which we all are part, astrology is a way to help the individual understand their unique place in the cosmos. Mm. You, you know, we are really in the world right now, we are in a healing crisis. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, I, I'm not saying a health crisis. I'm saying a healing crisis. Yeah. And the reason I'm saying that is because, you, you know, we're not able to keep up, so to speak, globally with healing the people that fit into the category of not being well yeah. right mm-hmm. uh, and, and yeah. you know some some can argue the case well pat that's kind of the natural evolution of things you know people die off you know, but that's not really what i'm talking about mm-hmm. there's emotional physical and spiritual uh healing dilemma right now yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask you, what did you discover in writing this book that would be the solution or provide an understanding for that? I mean, well, first, let me ask you, do you agree with what I just said? I do agree. And I think it comes down to us really understanding as human beings that we cannot, we simply cannot be responsible for everyone else's healing. But as a microcosm of the greater whole and understanding the connectedness that exists, once we understand that and we capitalize on who we are, the more we understand about ourselves, the more we take the time to consciously cultivate that connection and to understand who we are inside so that the connection to the outer world, that healing that we do for ourselves reverberates. It has to affect. It will affect the greater whole. But if we try the opposite, trying to wrap our arms around the world and trying to heal all of those before we heal ourselves, we will just drive ourselves insane. And actually, we're only going to we're only going to contribute more to the disconnection because we will be disconnected in ourselves. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Or, I mean, I hope this makes sense. Well, I think that's what we're doing right now. We are literally like the, the cat chasing, the dog chasing its tail or the hamster on the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my friend um, who, you know, practices many of the things that you've pointed out here says, that one of the things that's important for us to do as a society is to hit the pause button. Yes. And oh, yes. You, do you know what I mean? I hit know the pause mean. button. Because mm-hmm. if we don't hit the pause button, what happens is we keep trying to throw things at, let me just call it, healing mm-hmm. that are not working. And rather than pause for a minute and see what the potentiality is, we keep throwing more things. Exactly. You, you know, it, it, right. But pausing is what you talk about in this book in many, many places, actually. Yes. yes. And, uh, you know, to explain this scientifically, I will refer people to uh, experts like the Sim Harriman and the Resonance <laughs> Project. And I mentioned them and I, you know, I think very highly of their work. But and, and of course, before that, what their work is based upon is Buckminster Fuller's um vector equilibrium and and this is in the chapter the hexagon phenomenon but what i find so fascinating about this is that buckminster fuller you know uh defined the black hole 
as a unified field, and it is that point of stillness that is ready and waiting for any act or audience. So when we are able to tap into that, and, it, and it's also what, you know, Buddhists and monks and people who follow the Tao and, and the way of the Tao, which is that still point amid all of these changes, the hurricane that just is constantly happening around us, it's that point of stillness where we find equilibrium and the peace that passes all understanding, which, you know, the Bible talks about. That is how, and, and that is the point at which and in which we allow ourselves the space to heal. And that is where all the magic happens. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I worked with a mentor a number of years ago, and I wanted to uh, ask you this question, and then we'll go to break. And what she said to me, and, and she practiced many of the ancient traditions, she said to me, Pat, I don't want you to read what's on the paper anymore. I want you to read what's in the white space. And I'm telling you, I, I would go back to her and I'd ask her, what do you mean by in the white space? What do you mean? And then somehow magically, I had a sense of what she means. And I think that, you know, there's a chapter in your book where you talk about the mean, M-E-A-N, between the extremes. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that's what she might have been referring to. But I want to hear you talk about this. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we've got copies of this great book to give away. I mean, I read the book, but I got to go back and read it again because I have so many notes and questions about it. But boy, does it take you on a journey. When we come back, what does hitting pause mean? And what are the insights that that cosmic light, those cosmic messages, those ancient wisdoms, what can they tell us about how to live in the world today? Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the show. Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Are you traveling most of your day? Do you want to take Transformation Talk Radio with you anywhere you go? Well, guess what? There's an app for that. Just go to the App Store on your Apple device or the Google Play Store on your Android and search Transformation Talk Radio. Catch all of our live shows no matter where you are. Thanks for listening. Be you plus live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. 
Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit saraloos.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Oh, my gosh, Benny, we got to start to record what uh, what we talk about during these breaks. Maybe I'm going to start to record them because I think I can, because, you know, what Jennifer and I were just talking about is like, oh, my gosh, you know, I have a friend that got a tattoo that looks like one of the um, Metatron's cube in the book. But I, I have to just open up these phone lines now for people and start to give this the copy of the book away because something happens when you read this book. At least for me, it did. Something happened that starts to explain things that are not able, not easy to explain. And Jennifer, you're going to talk about how this happened for you. But Benny, let's give out the first copy of the book. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. You know, Jennifer, I did a show yesterday uh, with a woman, amazing woman, who has created the 1111 um, revolution. Mm-hmm. And, right? You're That's laughing because you know, right? But these things tie together. Now, yeah. Linda, who is my producer and by, my best friend, she schedules everybody. What do you think the odds are <laughs> of you being scheduled, Donna being scheduled, uh, Eve doing the show she just did on Tarot? What do you think the odds of something like that happening? You, well, I thought you were going to ask me. I thought you were going to say uh, we were all we all got on the air at eleven <laughs> eleven or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> But, you know, we came close. No, but, you know, but, it but, is about, can you explain it? Yeah. It is about timing. And, there, uh, you know, those repeating numbers, you know, what I've learned about the number 1111 is it's a gateway. And it's all about where we place our thoughts. And, you know, really the encouragement from higher octaves of, our being or the higher octaves of soul or your guides, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter, but it's the higher perspective that is reminding us how everything is connected and the opportunity that exists in every single now moment to tap into that magic, to tap into the infinite potential that lies in wait. You know, and two, as you said, put the pause button on all that is grabbing our attention in the external world or from mm-hmm. the ex- from external voices that want to pull us into chaos or that, you know, intentionally or unintentionally that right. are pulling us into fear. And what modern science tells us is that what we observe immediately changes upon our observing it. So how do we want to observe our world and our life and our health? Do we want to view life and our connection to it through the lens of fear or through the lens of trusting in the implicate order? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so here's what I want to ask you. You wrote this book, Something Changed in You. I read the book, and then I briefly reread it again last uh, this morning and last night. And I want to ask you, if we absorb these ancient wisdoms, what you're sharing with the world, something gets triggered. I cannot explain it. 
but how have you changed and what parts of this book were easy to write for you and <laughs> what were you like OMG yeah <laughs> I don't know if I can get that down on paper right there <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> so the easy part for me was simply honestly trusting now ask me that 10 years ago that wouldn't have been the case but uh, showing up, not taking score, understanding that everything, it, it, it was just like synchronicity, the magic of it. Exactly what I needed came to me at exactly the right moment and helping me stay in the flow, stay in that zone where, you know, the magic could unfold. But at the same time, yes, there were subjects that I, and rabbit holes, rabbit hole after rabbit hole that I didn't expect to have to go down. And the challenging chapters for me truly were the, the one that you mentioned earlier, um, philosophy, P-H-I, philosophy, the mean between the extremes, which addresses mathematics, which is not a strong suit of mine yeah. at all. And yeah. having to understand and then be able to process it and write about the rational numbers versus the irrational numbers, why they are important, both of those perspectives, and understanding math more metaphorically rather than through the absolute or in an absolute way. So that was a major challenge. And then um, another one was the hexagon phenomenon and, and trying to, well, I had to defer to the Resonance Project and the team there to um, really contribute and write how they wanted me to present their material because it, it goes over my head. But conceptually, I do understand. And that was what I wanted to come through for readers. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I want to say. Let's get to some details. And again, I want to give another copy of the book away. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. I cannot even imagine what it's like to be you. I just can't. For those of you that are thinking, what is Pat talking about? If you all were to see this book and the detail and explanation that Jennifer has put in this book, you would ask yourself the same question. I want to get really quickly here. I want to get to astrology. Why do I want to get there? Okay, some people know Tarot, but clearly you mentioned to somebody, do you know your horoscope? Do you know your sign? And I would say that many people in this country, in our pop culture, can rattle something off, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. But what is so right about that and what is so not right about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the not right is oversimplifying or seeing just one dimension of a multidimensional representation of who we are. So, yeah, the paper, the newspaper, fun signs, not saying that it doesn't sometimes hold true, but it's just a very basic framework. And... <clears throat> So where I come at this is helping people understand their multidimensionality. And so what astrology did for me was help me extract myself from the drama of what was happening in my world at the time and see my life from these higher, from the higher perspective of soul and understand that those larger cycles and by what I mean by that are the transits. I think I'm getting ahead of <clears throat> ahead of your question. So let's go back no, to the you're basics. Not. No, you're not. I'm, oh. a, I'm following you. You just keep going. Okay. You so just keep going here. I don't want to interrupt you. I may <laughs> have to skip a break, Benny. <laughs> so the transits act like triggers and they enliven or highlight certain aspects of a person's natal chart or what I call the cosmic signature. And as that happens, we may be confused and we get caught up in the drama and we don't understand why this is happening to us. It's like we feel like life is happening to us and we're not participating. So astrology helps us participate. It helps us get in the game. It helps us get a higher perspective and be able to understand why it is serving our good. It's not to punish us. 
Is that mm -hmm. succinct enough? Or <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. And we got two books gone, and I want to give another one away, Benny. Thank you. Benny is busy, busy, busy picking up these phones. They're off the hook. 1-800-930-2819. So listen, you know, I, I am not, uh, you know, astute on the ancient ways, but I've interviewed over 9,000 people, and I've talked to a lot of folks. Here's the one thing that everybody pretty much agrees with. We are in a benevolent universe. Do you know what I mean? Benevolent? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not a malevolent universe. Yeah, exactly. Um, but there is an exchange. There is a reciprocity to things. As a matter of fact, I studied reciprocity for eight years in the way of promises. Don't ask me why I did that. <laughs> um, but can you talk about this? Because some of these ancient cultures were founded upon reciprocity. Absolutely. They were a collective society, not an individualistic society. Right. Can you talk about how important that is and, you know, what the direction is we're going and what we need to adjust? Yeah, it's a great question, and I appreciate you asking it because anytime someone asks me, what, what's the one thing you'd really like for readers to get? And I say, if I have to whittle it down to one that the law of reciprocity is a cosmic law. It is not just a religious doctrine. In fact, it's so much more than that. But all of the religions do have the law of reciprocity, I think, at their core. It, it's, it's about remembering how every single thing that we do reverberates out. Like in the mm -hmm. previous conversation that we had, everything we think matters to our body. Everything that we practice matters in our lives. Everything that we say, even if we just think it, has a reverberating effect on our cells, organs, and tissues. And then it becomes a structure within which we live, and that structure impacts the world around us. So... The law of reciprocity exists, whether, whether we want to believe it or not, but we can capitalize on the joy of life and, as you said, the benevolence of this universe in which we live when we understand how important and profound reciprocity really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Here's the question, and we are going to skip, break, uh, skip the break, Benny, if you don't mind. Um, listen, all the books are gone. Clearly, this is a conversation that people want to know more about. Um, you talk about everything that I could possibly think about, including the brain. And <laughs> I would be in such a, a, I would regret not having this chat with you about the brain. Because I do believe in ancient wisdom, especially when you look at some of the Egyptian symbols, mm -hmm. there was an understanding of stuff that we don't even understand what they understood today, right? Am I, do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, now, you did not have to present this in the book, but you did. And, you know, and I'm going to tell you, it's on page 145 and 146, cosmic light in inner and outer space. Yeah, this is an important conversation. Tell us what it is and why it's so important today to understand it. Okay, and thank you for <laughs> for opening this up. It is one of my favorite chapters. I want to give credit too to Edward Bynum, who wrote Dark Light mm -hmm. Consciousness. He talked about neuromelanin, neuro mm -hmm. meaning uh, having to do with the brain. It's the um, matter that surrounds the brain, and it's actually what it's dark matter. But it actually helps the, the brain absorb and receive light. So darkness matters. Even the, the dark places, the, the shadow, all these things that we associate with the opposite of what we might want for ourselves, you know, the, the unknown. We all, instead of being uncomfortable and fearing the unknown, which is represented by the dark, there is a purpose. That it, and, and this is what really just was a huge aha for me when I encountered this material and I wrote about it. Without 
neuromelanin, the brain would not be able to absorb electromagnetic light from the planets and our solar system. And I also what they what the ancients also talked about was the body is a temple. So they designed all of their temples um, so that the altar represented what is the brain and the pineal gland in the body. Even the Bible talks about how when your eye becomes single, your whole body is filled with light. So the ancient practices, meditation, that still point, all the things that we've talked about have to do with getting out of polarity, getting out of this polarized vision of left brain, right brain, light, dark, right, wrong, good, bad, all of these ways that we divide our life, our world, our body, and understanding the unified existence that we have. And so meditation and its purpose in the system of, you know, that you spoke about, the Egyptian system and the systems yeah. that, that were in existence prior to that even, understood that the third eye, our intuition, is yeah. what connects us to the greater whole. And that is where healing takes place, where the knowledge, the wisdom that we need for any decision we're facing, um, that's that's how we get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me ask you a pop culture question. Um, I don't know if it's just me, uh, but... I have never seen in my lifetime quite the amount of either television shows, movies that are out there, things that really talk about, you know, multiple di dimensions, everything from, mm -hmm. you know, uh, independent cable series, uh, FX, you name it. People are really stepping into exploring this. In, in our movies, in the way the pop culture of the world looks at things, right? Yeah. And what I'm fascinated about is what you just said. Are we, as a collective and a collective consciousness, are we tapping in to something that we're longing to bring forth? Yeah. Did that make sense, that question? Sure. I mean, okay. yeah, absolutely. Did you want me to comment? Yes. <laughs> I do. I do, because I don't know if I'm just making stuff up in my head or what here. <laughs> um, well, in my last chapter is the future awaits our return. And so mm -hmm. I think that's what's happening now. We are all hungry to reconnect with our ancient roots, to understand who we really, really are. And our systems, our modern day systems, have all been structured upon a faulty foundation. There's so much of our history, so much about our origin that has been missing. And this is what we are in search of now. There's so much more to us that involves that infinite potential. And we may never have it all figured out, and I don't think that we're supposed to necessarily. I don't, I don't know that that's the goal, because is there any ceiling on the infinite? I mean... We're always going to be growing, expanding, and learning, and I think that's why we need to get comfortable with the mystery, get comfortable yeah. with the unknown, and just, you know, embrace the fact that there's always something more yeah. rather than get stuck in rigidity and, and, and rigid paradigms. Yeah, yeah. Um, the reason I'm really kind of... Um well, more than kind of, I'm excited to be talking with you because this isn't just a book about throwing data out. You have a solution. And I, I know I've saved this for the last four minutes of the show, but it's important to talk about it. You know, you wrote this book for, for, for a reason. There is a solution. Tell us what it is. Okay, well, <laughs> the solution as I see it and perceive it is, to know the self, to take that journey, to go within, to not be afraid, to um, cultivate parts of yourself that you may have up until now been afraid to cultivate. Because what happens when you take the time to really know yourself, I'm talking about the inner space that is infinite and that has infinite potential. 
we are microcosms of that infinite potential, the infinite wisdom that creates worlds. So, uh, you know, you can look through the lens of science and get to know the world that way, but I think it's much more exciting, in my case using the language of astrology, but there are many other options, to take the time to go inside, to be still, cultivate your own connection with the isness of all that is. And that's where the magic is. And that's, um, that's when people, you know, when individuals can really be turned on. It's knowing yourself is not a selfish thing. It's a very, very healing process. And yeah. it helps others yeah. heal too. Yeah, you know, one of uh, as I'm looking at the book, I'm very, very clear that you know we're not just talking about what we're learning uh, on our planet, what we've learned on our uh, on this planet. You know, you're talking about, if I might say, you know, planetary signatures. We're talking about cosmic foundations. Mm -hmm. You know, specifically uh, when you say that cosmic foundations, give folks folks a sense of of how to connect the dots. Okay. Well, an analogy I like to use is mm -hmm. just like every snowflake has its unique signature. Each person also has a unique cosmic signature, cosmic configuration. It's the harmonic mathematic, uh, mathematical relationships between the planets in our solar system and beyond, but what we know is you know, that's where that's our starting point. So the natal chart represents that signature. How a person brings it to life is going to depend on where they are, what, you know, their state of consciousness. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, you can have twins born and their natal signature is going to be virtually identical. But just like a piece of music is brought to life mm -hmm. and sounds different depending on whether it's a student or a master playing the piece um, and making music of it, it's going to be different for each soul. But that's the interaction, that's, that's the co-creative process, and that's where free will comes in. Yes, we have a signature that we carry with us, but there's still constant morphing going on. You've got the progression of the sun and moon, so the relationship of the conscious and unconscious personality. You've got the transit and how they are triggering different areas of life to come to life, to mm -hmm. engage in a new dialogue, to see yourself and yourself in the world a little differently. Did I answer your question? I hope so. Yeah, you did. And, you know, the reason I ask this question is because it really points to one thing in particular, and that is we have to so above, so below, right? As above, mm -hmm. so below. So what you're saying is as on the outside, so on the inside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do this on a regular basis. We do point to things outside of ourselves, outside of our world, and say, how can I learn from that? We, mm -hmm. Today, we used astrology as an example, but there are many, many other examples. Yes. Sacred geometry is one of my favorite, right? Yes. But if we do that, what you've said is there is an end game in mind. And if we understand the end game, there's probably not much we can't heal. At least that's me jumping to my assessment, right? Well, help me understand what you mean by end game. What I mean is, you know, in the world we live in, people are looking for what's the takeaway. Mm, Why would yeah. I want to understand this? Yeah. Why would I want to use this, right? If I go to my doctor, I'm planning to get healed. Sometimes you don't get healed. But, you know, okay. if we understand the, the, the nature of what you've put together, yeah. There's going to be a play. There's going to be an outcome. Well, right. And what I would just add to that is that I'm encouraging people to, okay, to borrow your words, hit the pause button on looking externally and giving their power away to someone else to fix them or to tell them what's wrong. I guess that's, you know, I'm contradicting myself because I do want people to buy my book, to read my book. But yeah, no, point, no. The point is that the solution lies within, and so in, rather than having the external circumstances and even the configuration of your natal chart determine 
your fate. It's about you engaging your own power, which is infinite because of your connection to all that is, engaging that power and capitalizing upon that and understanding the impact that you yourself can make on the external. Mm, I love it. Wow. Thank you so much for today. I know we just barely scratched the surface. How can people get a copy of your book? And please tell folks how to how to find out more about you. Okay. Thank you. So you best place to go is my website, soundworksbygail.com. My phone number is 814-422-3177. I welcome questions. And uh, my email is soundworksbygail at gmail.com. You bet. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Hey, everybody, I'm Dr. Pat. If you've missed any part of this, it will replay again later. Stay tuned for another hour on Transformation Talk Radio. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.